It is May 1962. An experiment is being conducted in the Elegant Interaction Laboratory at Yale University. The subjects are 40 males between the ages of 20 and 50 residing in the greater New Haven area. They were obtained by a newspaper advertisement and direct mail solicitation. The subjects range in occupation from corporation presidents to good humor men and plumbers, and an educational level from one who had not finished elementary school to subjects who have doctorate and other professional degrees. Now, both of you have been paid, so let me sit right down. So let me say that the checks are yours simply for showing up at the lab. And from this point on, no matter what happens, the money is yours. Uh, I should like to tell both of you a little about the memory project. Psychologists have developed several theories to explain how people learn uh, various types of material. Uh, some of the better known theories are treated in the book over there, The Teaching and Learning Process by Cantor. One theory is that people learn things correctly whenever they get punished for making a mistake. A common application to this theory would be when parents spank a child if he does something wrong. But actually, we know very little about the effect of punishment on learning because almost no truly scientific studies have been made of it in human beings. Uh, for instance, we don't know how much punishment is best for learning. And we don't know how much difference it makes as to who's giving the punishment, whether an adult learns best from an older or a younger person than himself or many things of this sort. So what we're doing project is bringing together a number of adults of different occupations and ages, and we're asking some of them to be teachers and some to be learners. Uh, we want to find out just what effect different people have on each other as teachers and learners, and also what effect uh, punishment will have on learning in this situation. Uh, therefore, I'm going to ask one of you to be the teacher uh, here this afternoon, and the other be the learner. And the way we usually decide is to let you draw uh, from these two pieces of paper on which I've written the two uh, positions. If this is agreeable with both of you can do that one. You take one, please. You know the other. Would you open those and tell me which of you is which, please? The teacher. Where? The teacher. Where? All right, now the next thing we'll have to do is set the uh, learner up so that he can get some sort of punishment. So, learner, would you uh, step out here with me, please? <coughs> Step right in here, learner, and have a seat there. You can leave your coat on the back of that chair if you will, please. Take it right off. That's fine. Have a seat right here and pull yourself right up to the counter, please. Uh, teacher, you may look on if you'd like while we get set up in here. Would you roll up your right sleeve, please? Left sleeve. What I'm going to do is strap down your arms to avoid any excessive movement on your part during the experiment. Is that too tight? Okay. This electrode is connected to the shock generator in the next room. And this electrode paste is to provide a good contact to avoid any blister or burn. All right, now let me explain to you, learner, exactly uh, what's going to happen and what you're supposed to do. The teacher will read a list of word pairs to you like these. Uh, blue girl, nice day, fat neck, and so forth. You are to try to remember each pair. For the next time through, the teacher will read only the first word or the first half of the word pair. For example, he will say blue. And then he'll read four other words, such as boy, girl, grass, hat. 
Now, your job is to remember which one of these four other words was originally paired with blue. And you indicate your answer by pressing one of these four switches. Now, can you reach those all right? That's fine. Now, if the first word I just read, boy, had been paired with blue, you'd press the first switch, and this will indicate to the teacher that you thought it was the first word. If you thought it had been the second word, girl, you'd press the second switch, and so forth for the third word, the third switch, the fourth word, the fourth switch. Now, if you get it correct, fine. If you make an error, however, you'll be punished with an electric shock. So, of course, it is to your advantage that you learn all these word pairs as quickly as possible. I think so. Uh, do you have any questions now before we go into the next room? Uh, no, but I think I should say this. Uh, about two years ago, I was in the Veterans Hospital in West Haven. Mm -hmm. And while there, they detected a heart condition. There's nothing serious. But as long as I'm having these shocks, uh, how strong are they? How dangerous are they? Well, no, although they may be painful, they're not dangerous. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, that's all. All right, teacher, would you take the test and be seated in front of the shock generator, please, in the next room? Mm -hmm. This machine uh, generates electric shocks, and when you press one of the switches all the way down, the learner gets a shock. When you release it, the shock stops, you see, like that. The switch will remain in this middle position after you've released it to show you which switches you've used on the board. Of course, if you were to press uh, any one of them again, the learner would get another shock. All subjects are given identical instructions and the sample shock. The machine is now on. To give you, the teacher, an idea of how much shock the learner is getting, we think it's only fair that you receive a sample shock yourself. Are uh, you agreeable with this? Certainly. I have to. Would you pull up your right sleeve a little bit, please? <coughs> no, just All right. That's fine. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and estimate the number of volts you receive in the sample shock. Uh, do not open your eyes until I tell you to do so, please. Would you close them now? Okay, you may open your eyes and using the voltage scale uh, here, would you estimate for me the number of volts you receive, please? You may also use the verbal designation, slight, moderate, strong, so forth, to help you. Say moderate. A number, please. Would you? About 75. 75. No, actually, it was 45 here. <clears throat> Although it may have seemed stronger because of the uh, electrode paste, which provides a perfect contact. So. All right, let's go on to our instructions. We will begin with this test. Uh, you will read each pair of words in this list once to the learner until you've read through the entire list. Direct your voice toward that microphone as the rooms are partially soundproof. After you've read through the list once, you'll go on to the next page. And here, starting from line A, you'll read the word in large letters along with each of the other words in the line. For example, in the first line, you read blue, boy, girl, grass, hat. Now, after you've read the four choices, the learner pushes one of the switches on the board in front of him. And the number he has selected will light up in this box, one, two, three, or four. Now, if he gives the correct answer, you say correct and go on to the next line. The correct answer is underlined and is also indicated in the right margin. Yeah. If he were to indicate the wrong answer, you would say wrong. Then tell him the number of volts you're going to give him. Then give him the punishment. Then read the correct word pair once. And then go on to the next line. For example, if he indicated three for blue, you would say wrong. Fifteen volts. You press and release the switch. Read blue girl, and then go on to the next line. I see. I see. Now, each time he gives a wrong answer, you move up one switch on the shock generator. I see. And it's important that you follow this procedure exactly. So to help you, uh, let me go through it again very quickly. All right. I would suggest you read the list and the test at a brisk pace to keep it moving. Uh, right. And, of course, we'll begin with 15 volts for the first wrong answer. Okay. Do not begin until I say ready, begin, please. Attention, uh, learner, your teacher is about to begin the test. Try and remember the word pairs. Ready? Begin, please. Blue girl, nice day, fat neck. The early stages of the test pass uneventfully. Incorrect. You'll now get a shock of 75 volts. Soft air. He kind of did some yelling in there. Incorrect. You'll now get a shock of 105 volts. Hard head. 
Just how far can you go in this thing? As far as is necessary. What do you mean, as far as is necessary? To complete the test. I sure don't know the effect of this thing, and I'm a little skeptical about electricity. The experiment requires it to go on, teacher. Please continue. Incorrect. 150 volts. Oh. Sad face. Experiment. That's all. Get me out of here. I told you I had heart trouble. My heart's starting to bother me now. Get me out of here, please. Continue. My heart's starting to bother me. I refuse to go on. Let me out. Uh, I, I think we ought to find out what's wrong in there first. The experiment requires that you continue, teacher. Well, the experiment might require that we continue, but I still think we should find out what the condition of the gentleman is. As I said before, although the shocks may be painful, they're not dangerous. Look, I don't know anything about electricity. I don't profess any knowledge, nor will I go any further until I find out if the guy's okay. It's absolutely essential that you continue. Well, essential or not, this program isn't quite that important to me that I should go along doing something that I know nothing about, particularly if it's going to injure someone. I don't know what this is all about. Well, whether the learner likes it or not, we must go on until he's learned all the word pairs correctly. Well, uh, you can sure have your 450 back. I didn't want it anyhow. I intend to give it to some charitable organization, but I wouldn't go on with it. The 450 is not the uh, issue here. That check is yours simply yeah, coming really to the lab. Uh, it is essential that you continue the experiment. No, it isn't essential. Not one bit. You have no other choice, teacher. Oh, I have a lot of choices. My number one choice is that I wouldn't go on if I thought he was being harmed. The teacher was, of necessity, placed in a difficult predicament, and steps had to be taken to assure his well-being before he was discharged from the laboratory. After an extended discussion with the experimenter, a friendly reconciliation was arranged between teacher and learner. Oh, you sure you. Me go. <laughs> better now? Much better. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Wrong. It's hair. 75 volts, Jim. Oh. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Please continue. Cool. Wrong. It's head. 105 volts. Hello. Oh. Wet. Wrong. It's horse. 150 volts. Experiment. That's all. Get me out of here. I thought you might have heart trouble. My heart's starting to bother me now. Get me out of here, please. My heart's starting to bother me. I refuse to go on. Let me out. Uh, continue, teacher, please. Go on. <clears throat> the next word is sad. Well, I'm not going on if he refuses to do it. The experiment requires that you go on, teacher. Well, if he refuses, I won't. Whether the learner likes it or not, we must go on until he's learned all the words. Take there. the check back. I'm not going to hurt the guy. No, the check's not the issue. Uh, it, it's absolutely essential that you continue. Well, he don't want to. No, I refuse to. Well, you have no other choice. You must yes, go Yes, I on. have a choice. That is, if you don't continue, uh, we're going to have to discontinue the uh, experiment. Well, we'll have to. He says cut it out. After all, he knows what he can stand. Right, I took that thing, the, the slight one, it was enough for me. I wouldn't want to be getting that every time I got a wrong answer. That's my opinion. That's where I'm going to stand on it. How do you feel? How do I feel? He was getting a shock. I feel all right. <laughs> I'd like to ask you something. At one point, uh, were you, you were doing something a little unusual. Were you laughing at some at one point? <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> at first, I was laughing at him, and I heard him yell, ouch. Why do you think you were laughing? I don't know. I thought it was funny, I suppose. And then I got to think, when he said, no, that's enough, he had enough, so it wasn't funny to me then. One might suppose that a subject would simply break off or continue as his conscience and temperament dictate, yet this is very far from what happened. There were powerful reactions of tension and emotional strain in a substantial portion of the teachers. One puzzling sign of tension was the regular occurrence of nervous laughing fits. Fourteen of forty subjects showed definite signs of nervous laughter and smiling. In the post-experimental interview, subjects took pains to point out that they were not sadistic types and that the laughter did not mean they enjoyed attacking a learner. 
I'd like to tell you a little more about the experiment. First of all, uh, uh, the gentleman in there was not being shocked. He got no shocks whatsoever. Hmm. Did you think he was? Certainly I did. In fact, uh, I tried to get my finger off the button as fast as I could. No, he wasn't being shocked at all. And uh, the main purpose of the experiment was to see how you would react to Mr. Williams' orders whether you would uh, take them or defy his authority or what. I defied it. You certainly did. Why didn't you go on in that situation? What the hell with him? Who the hell is he? <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. See, right? Oh, thanks for that. There's an ashtray right over there. Um, He's not telling... Uh, in my mind, I was hurting that guy. Uh -huh. I have to continue to hurt another human being. I don't believe in it. No matter what he had said. No matter what who said. Mr. Williams. The hell with him, Mr. Williams, or anybody else. How did you feel about Mr. Williams? I didn't. Never gave it a thought. You mean, I didn't like him? Uh -huh. Well, how did you feel about him? Well, I didn't even think about it, quite frankly. Uh -huh. I don't care who he is, you or the president of Yale or anybody else. One aim of the research was to study behavior in a strong situation of deep consequence to the participants. This approach meant that we had a special obligation to protect the welfare and dignity of the persons who took part in the study. Before they left the laboratory, subjects were assured that the victim had received no painful shocks, and equally important, they were reconciled with their victim in an atmosphere of friendliness. After the completion of the experimental series, subjects were sent a detailed report of the results and full purposes of the experimental program. A formal assessment of this procedure points to its overall effectiveness. The victim was an accomplice of the experimenter. The drawing was rigged so that the naive subject was always the teacher and the accomplice always became the learner. The victim, according to plan, provided many wrong answers. His verbal responses were standardized on tape, and each protest was coordinated to a particular voltage level on the shock generator with the aid of indicator lights. The experimenter, who was provided with a similar indicator panel, took notes on the subject's performance. He recorded any deviations from the prescribed sequence of shocks. The interval between the victim's answer and the subject's delivery of a shock and the time in milliseconds that the shock lever was depressed. Unknown to the subjects, shock levels were automatically recorded by an event recorder wired directly into the shock generator. This provided us with an objective record of each subject's performance. That is incorrect. This one will be 195 volts. The correct one. Let me out of here. Slow. Dance. Let me out of here. My heart's bothering me. Let me out of here. You have no right to keep me here. Let me out. Let me out of here. Let me out. Continue, please. Let me out of here. My heart's bothering me. Let Go me on. out. Let me out. Responsible for it. Red. That is incorrect. This will be at 3.30. The correct phrase is rich. Let me Boy. Let me out of here. My heart's bothering me. Let me out, I tell you. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. You have no right to hold me here. The next phrase is let fast. Me let me out. Let me out. Let me out of here. Let me Bird, out. Bird, car, out. train, plane. Continue, teacher. That is incorrect. This will be 345. The correct answer is fast bird. The next one, blunt. If he doesn't answer, I'm going to go further. Away. I think 345 is as far as I'm willing to go under his condition. He's complaining. As I said, the experiment requires that you continue, teacher. I'm not going to go any further. It's absolutely essential that you continue. Yeah, I'm not going to do it, though. Whether the learner likes it or not, we must go on until he has learned uh, all the word pairs correctly. Once, if he didn't answer, I didn't mind. Twice, but the third time he refuses to answer, I don't want to go any further. Because I think that when we're getting this stage here, and he is uh, 
complaint of a heart condition. And he is complaining now. I don't want to go any further with it. You had no other choice, teacher. Well, I have a choice. I'm not going to go ahead with it. Well, we'll have to discontinue the experiment then. I'm sorry. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I may. Sure. Before the post-experimental interview, subjects were asked to complete a questionnaire. They were asked to indicate, for example, on a 14-point scale, just how nervous or tense they felt. Subjects were also asked to estimate the degree of pain suffered by the victim. Let's see. Could I have those sheets, please? Sure. That's... Hey, you say that um, the last few shocks that you administered to the learner and you seemed to you to be extremely painful to him. Why do you say that? Well, by the yelling and the... Uh... Well, he wanted to get out of it. I mean, how else can you think? Do you think he had a right to get out? Well, I should think so. Didn't he volunteer to be in the experiment? Yes, he did. What Not did knowing he... what he was in for. What gave him the right to get out of the experiment? Well, it's something that's against his will. Well, of a hundred people placed in this situation, how many do you think would just go right on to the end? And Mr. Wallace's, if Mr. Wallace were out there, and say Mr. Williams, for some reason or other, said, keep going. You're asking me how many... Out of a hundred, right. Well, personally, I think, yeah, if you get one or two, you'd be lucky. Well, I'm not sure lucky is, is the right <laughs> word. Forty psychiatrists at a leading medical school were also asked to predict the performance of 100 hypothetical subjects. They predicted that only a little more than one-tenth of one percent of the subjects would administer the highest shock on the board. Yet actually, 50 percent of the subjects obeyed the experimenter's commands fully in the experiment depicted in this film. Wrong. 90 volts. Wrong. Volts. 135, and it's a woman. And white cloud, horse, rock, house. Answer, wrong. 150 volt. Answer, horse. Continue, please. Go right on. The experiment requires you continue, teacher. Please continue. The next word is sad. Do I make you go Continue, please. Oh, sad. Sad. Face, music, clown, girl. Correct. Next one, short. Sentence, movie, skirt, time. Answer, please. Wrong. Under 65 volts. Time. Let me out. Continue, please. Go on. Condition down. You want me to go? Just continue, please. Sh sharp. Axe, needle, stick, blade. Answer, please. Wrong. I'm up to 180 volts. Please continue, teacher. Needle, you're going to get a shot. 180 volts. I said before, the shocks may be painful, but yeah, they're not but dangerous. They're hollering, he can't stand it. What if something happens to him? The experiment requires that you continue, teacher. Yeah, but uh, I'm not going to get that man sick in there. I mean, he's hollering in there. You know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> he's 
love it. Whether the learner likes it or not, we must go on until well, he's learned I mean, all the uh, word pairs. I refuse to take the responsibility of getting hurt in there. I'm not, I mean, he's under hollering. It's absolutely essential that you continue, teacher. There's too many left here, and I mean, geez, he, go, he gets wrong here. There's too many of them left. I mean, who's going to take the responsibility if anything happens to that gentleman? I'm responsible for anything that happens here. Continue, please. All right, next one, slow. Walk, dance, truck, music. Answer, please. Wrong. 195 volts. Dance. Continue, please. Let me out of here. You have no right to keep me here. Let me out of 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 here
Excellent. Fast. Verb. Car, train, plane. Go on, please. With the please answer. The answer is bird. 345 volts. Blunt, knife, stick, word, arrow. Answer, please. Continue, please. The answer is arrow. 360 volts. Go on, please, with the experiment. Please continue. Soft, rug, pillow, hair, grass. Answer, please. Go on, teacher. Hair, 375 volts. I think something's happened to that fellow in there. I don't get no answer. He was hollering a less voltage. Can't you check in to see if he's all right, please? Not once we've started. Please continue, teacher. Cool, day, shade, water, cave. Answer, please. Are you all right in there? Are you all right? Please continue, teacher. Oh, you know, I keep giving them shocks. Continue, please. I'm up to 390. Continue, please. Something's happened to that man in there. And that's from gold, dollar, necklace, moon, paint. Something's happened to that man in there. You better check in on him, sir. He won't answer me or nothing. Please uh, continue. Go on, please. You accept all the responsibility? The responsibility is mine. Correct. Please go on. Gold, dollar, necklace, moon, paint. Answer, please. Are you all right? 405 volts. The answer is moon. An action hard. Stone, head, bread, work. Answer, please. The answer is head, 420 volts. The next one, wet, night, grass, duck, cloth. The answer is duck, 435 volts. It says danger, severe shock here. Next six on the next one. Continue, please. 435 volts. Next one, brave, woman, soldier, dog, horse. Answer is woman, 450 volts. That's it. Now continue using the last switch on the board, please, the 450 switch for each wrong answer. Continue, please. I don't get no answer. Please continue. The next word is white. Don't you think you should look in on him, please? Not once we've started the experiment. But what if something's happened to him and had an attack or something there? The experiment requires that we continue. Go on, please. Don't, uh, don't the man's help mean anything? Whether the learner likes it or not, we but must... But he might be dead in there. I mean, some people can't take this shock, sir. Please I mean, continue. I don't tend to be rude, but I mean, I think you should look in on him. Whether I mean, all you got to do is look in the door. I don't get no answer, no noise. Something I think has happened to the gentleman in there, sir. We must continue. Go on, please. You're going to keep giving him, what, 450 volts every shot now? That's correct. Continue. The next word is white. White, cloud, horse, rock, house. Answer, please. The answer is horse, 450 volts. Next word, sad, face, music, clown, girl. The answer is face. 450 volts. Next one is short. Sentence, movie, skirt, time. All right, excuse me, teacher. We'll have to discontinue the experiment. I'd like to uh, ask you a few questions, if I may. I'd like to ask you, how do you feel about it? 
I feel all right, but I don't like what's happened. That I fall in there, he's been hollering, and we had to keep giving him shocks. I didn't like that one bit. I mean, he's, he wanted to get out, and he just kept going, kept throwing 450 volts. I didn't like that. He wouldn't even look at on that gentleman. Well, who was actually pushing the switch? I was. But he kept insisting. I told him no, but he said, he got to keep going. I told him it's time we stopped when we got up to uh, 195, 210 volts. But why didn't you just stop? He wouldn't let me. I wanted to stop. I kept insisting to stop, but he says no. I told him to look in on the fellow there, but he wouldn't do it. Actually, the, uh, the uh, shocks are not dangerous at all. Well, I mean, I didn't hear no more answers from the fellow. I figured he should look, be looked in on anyway, but he wouldn't do it. Well, let me ask you something. Is there anything that Mr. Wallace in there could have said that would have gotten you to stop? Oh, no, I didn't hear you. The only thing I heard is the shock wasn't uh, too bad. Well, is there anything that Mr. Wallace could have said that would have gotten you to stop? Something that he said that would have gotten me to stop? Yeah. No. Why is that? He didn't say anything about uh, making me stop. No, but is there anything that Mr. Wallace could have said that would have caused you to stop giving the shocks, no matter what uh, the experimenter had uh, told you? Well, I figured 200, uh, the voltage were given were quite a bit. I wanted to stop, but he kept insisting not to stop. I mean, the fellow in there is hollering. He says, I don't want to do it. I want to, I want to get out of here. I want to get out of here. What, why didn't you stop anyway? I, I did stop, but he kept going, keep going. Well, why didn't you just disregard what he said? He says it's got to go on, the experiment. Okay. I'd like to tell you a little about the uh, experiment. Uh, uh, do you feel a little upset? Or... Well, I mean, I feel concerned about the gentleman in there. I do, sir. Right. Okay. Let me tell you, first of all, that this is not essentially an experiment in memory and learning. Uh, it's an experiment in which we are looking at your reaction to taking orders. And Mr. Williams gave you those orders to go on according to schedule. So the gentleman in there was not actually getting shocked. He was not getting shocked at all. Well, you mean he wasn't getting nothing? He is part of the act. Well, I'm glad to hear that, I'm telling you. I mean, I was getting upset here. I mean, I was getting ready to walk out. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And, uh, he, he wasn't getting shocked, really, and he was in uh, one piece. And uh, this was set up so that we could see how you would react to taking now, you seem quite reluctant to go on. In fact, on several occasions, you said you didn't want to go on. Well, I was concerned about the other party, sir. Some people actually go on quite uh, gleefully. Uh, no matter what. No matter what. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, maybe in other instances where human life wasn't involved or a person that had suffered, maybe I keep going on. But, I mean, I couldn't see the point. I don't want a guy to suffer there. I figured he was having a heart attack or something. That's the reason I wanted to stop. Well, you know that in a uh, hospital situation, if you work for a doctor as an orderly, and he told you to give a hypodermic to a patient, even though the patient uh, protested, well, you might have to do it. Okay. Well, that's true, sir. If I understood, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe more of what the treatment was he was getting there, maybe I would go on. But, I mean, the way he was hollering, I thought he was in agony. Yeah. I mean, then I think it's for somebody that knows a little more about this machine and stuff to say whether to go or not. And that's why I asked the gentleman there, should I keep going? Why don't we bring in uh, Mr. Wallace? He is actually an employee of the project. You'll see he's in one piece. Jim? God Why bless you, boy. You, you have me shaking in here. <coughs> nice to see you. Say, man. Feel better now? I sure as heck do. That's good. I thought you just about had it in there. That's good. That's well, let me good. ask you something. Now that you know about the experiment, that he wasn't hurt, how do you feel about having been there? Well, tell you the honest truth, I, th well, I was thinking he was getting them shocks. I thought it was being overdone. I mean, I was just about ready to get good out of it. You're a good I mean, I was concerned about you. I mean, I, like I should have known better. I mean, you wouldn't take any chance with the human life here, not with these experiments. Many people not knowing much about the experiment claim that subjects who go to the end of the board are sadistic. Nothing could be more foolish as an overall characterization of these persons. The context of their action must always be considered. The individual upon entering the laboratory becomes integrated into a situation that carries its own momentum.
In further experiments, we have attempted to analyze a few of the factors that contribute to the force of the situation. The salience of the victim seems in some degree to have regulated the subject's performance. Additional experimental conditions were designed to explore this possibility. In a first condition, the victim was placed in another room and could not be heard or seen by the subject, except that at 300 volts, he pounded on the wall in protest. After 300 volts, he no longer answered or was heard from. In a second condition, the victim's protest could be heard through the walls of the laboratory. This condition was depicted in the present film. In a third condition, the victim was placed in the same room as the subject and one and a half feet from him. Thus visible, as well as audible and voice cues were provided. The final condition of the series was identical to this, with this exception. The victim only received a shock when his hand rested on a shock plate. At the 150 volt level, the victim demanded to be let free and refused to place his hand on the shock plate. The experimenter ordered the subject to force the victim's hand onto the plate. Thus, obedience in this condition required that the subject have physical contact with the victim in order to give him punishment beyond the 150 volt level. Forty adult subjects were studied in each condition. The data revealed that obedience was significantly reduced as the victim was made more immediate to the subject. If the spatial relationship of the subject and victim is relevant to the degree of obedience, the relationship of subject to experimenter would also seem to play a part. In a series of experiments, we varied the physical closeness and degree of surveillance of the experimenter. In one condition, the experimenter sat just a few feet away from the subject. In a second condition, after giving initial instructions, the experimenter left the laboratory and gave his orders by telephone. In still a third condition, the experimenter was never seen, providing instructions by means of a tape recording activated when subjects entered the laboratory. Obedience dropped sharply as the experimenter was physically removed from the laboratory. The number of obedient subjects when the experimenter was present was almost three times as great as when the experimenter gave his orders by telephone. It would appear that something akin to fields of force diminishing in effectiveness with increasing psychological distance from their source have a controlling effect on the subject's performance. The effectiveness of the experimenter's commands may depend in an important way on the larger institutional context in which they are issued. The experiments described thus far were conducted at Yale University, an organization which most subjects regarded with respect and sometimes awe. To explore the problem, we moved our apparatus to a somewhat rundown office building in industrial Bridgeport, and we replicated experimental conditions there without any visible tie to the university. The level of obedience in Bridgeport, although somewhat reduced, was not significantly lower than that obtained at Yale. A considerable amount of obedience and defiance in everyday life occurs in connection with groups, and we had reason to feel, in the light of many group studies already done in psychology, that group forces would have a profound effect on reactions to authority. A series of experiments was run to examine these effects. In all cases, only one naive subject was studied each hour, but he performed in the midst of actors who, unknown to him, were employed by the experimenter. In one experiment, the actors broke off in the middle of the experiment. When this happened, 90% of the subjects followed suit and defied the experimenter. In another condition, the actors followed the orders obediently. This strengthened the experimenter's power only slightly. In still a third experiment, the job of pushing the switch to shock the learner was given to one of the actors while the naive subject performed a subsidiary act. In this situation, only three subjects out of 40 broke off. The results, as I observe them in the laboratory, are disturbing. They raise the possibility that human nature cannot be counted on to insulate men from brutality and inhumane treatment at the direction of malevolent authority. A substantial proportion of people do what they are told to do, irrespective of the content of the act and without limitations of conscience, so long as they perceive that the command comes from a legitimate authority. If in this study, an anonymous experimenter could successfully command adults to subdue a 50-year-old man and force on him painful electric shocks against his protests, one can only wonder what government, with its vastly greater authority and prestige, can command of its subjects.